Hi, Paul Stacey here. I'm in Vancouver. It's May 2020. Uh, during the pandemic, I thought I'd provide an update on uh, the activities of Open Education Global and our members uh, since the start of the year. We started the year with a change to our name. We used to be called the Open Education Consortium and at the end of last year we changed our name to Open Education Global to better reflect the global membership that we have all around the world. Uh, we were delighted to launch our new website at the start of the year and, and begin to roll out our new identity. Uh, like many of you, uh, the pandemic caught us <laughs> and uh, swept us along in its wake. And so I'm here at home, uh, so I expect most of you have also had to change your workplace and are now working from home. Actually, working from home is not so much a new thing for myself or my team. That's something we've been doing for uh, for quite a long time. So that part of our world is normal, but of course the dramatic effect that the pandemic has had on education has affected us uh, as well. And uh, in response to the pandemic, we began to do a number of things. Um, one was we community sourced some recommended resources to help people uh, make the shift to teaching online and doing so with open education resources. We also began to do some live sessions which we called Care and Share which provided a, a forum for people to drop in and have a conversation with us about some of the challenges that they were facing. And then we also s launched a series which we're calling Extraordinary Stories of Resiliency in the pandemic which we invited uh, people who've been doing some amazing work and I know most educators have had to go well beyond the call of duty in terms of responding to the pandemic so we've been aggregating some of those stories and featuring them in the Extraordinary Stories uh, collection. Uh, the pandemic's also meant a huge change for us in terms of our plans for the forthcoming year um, and I thought I'd highlight uh, some of those plans in the context of looking forward. Um, it's cloudy here today, as you can see, and so in some ways, and, uh, the background uh, is Vancouver, the skyline of Vancouver. I'm on the roof of my apartment. Um, and in some ways, I expect the cloudy skies like we have today here in Vancouver are not unlike how it felt for many of you to have to confront the pandemic. A definite need to alter our behavior and our plans. So here are some of the things that Open Education Global is doing looking forward because I actually am now at a stage where we've responded to initial crisis and now we're looking forward and starting to forecast plans for the coming months. And I hope you are too. I think this is a pivotal moment for education where we can um, think about transitioning out of the pandemic into a recovery um, and I wonder what education will look like post-pandemic and whether uh, many of you like me are starting to imagine how we might not just transition to back, back to what education used to look like um, prior to the pandemic but potentially um, recover to something that's better than what we, what we had before. So here's a few things from us that perhaps represent some of those ways in which education um, and the, our, certainly our activities might be better than what we did before. Um, we just launched uh, this year's Open Education Awards. The call for nominations is up on our website. I want to highlight a couple of things. We've added additional individual awards, including um, awards for resiliency in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, and also an award, uh, we've also added an award for the response to the UNESCO OER recommendations. So if your organization is, is making rapid um, advances towards fulfilling the recommendation, uh, consider being nominated for that award. Uh, so we're really thrilled actually to have the awards out there and encourage you to check them out and, and uh, submit some nominations so that your peers who are doing exemplary work can be recognized by the whole community. Uh, another big change for us has been our plans for our Open Education Global Conference. We were just thrilled this year to have it hosted by Taiwan and so it was originally intended to be a face-to-face -face conference in Taipei uh, on November 20th to the 22nd. But clearly the pandemic has uh, changed those plans as it has for conferences and face-to-face -face events all around the world. So uh, we have decided uh, in partnership with our 
our host in Taiwan, to transition our event to a virtual event, which will take place for the entire week of the 16th to the 20th of November 2020. It'll be an online event. Uh, we're just about to release the call for proposals. Uh, we've had to modify it, of course, to accommodate the virtual nature of the event. And I'll say a couple of quick things about the event. We, we acknowledge that a virtual event, of course, is significantly different than a face-to-face -face event. But we are hoping to capture some of the best aspects of what a face-to-face -face event entails. And that includes the social connection and social engagement. So we'll be structuring our event such that on day one, there'll be formal sessions that are given by presenters. But day two will be a day without formal sessions and instead we'll focus entirely on social engagement. So we'll provide opportunities for you to uh, have some discussion and question and answer with the presenters from the first day, but also to socially connect with each other. And we'll, we'll likely structure some, uh, some events associated with that social engagement to encourage partnership, collaboration and sharing among the participants. Um, so that's a big change for our event. Um, we're really looking forward to it though. It'll mean uh, replanning the whole thing and using different kinds of infrastructure to substitute for um, a place-based event, but we're quite excited by, by it. Um, I also want to mention that we are, um, we have formed a partnership with other open education organizations around the world to support the implementation of the UNESCO OER recommendation. And while that's perhaps not a high priority topic during the pandemic, during this crisis, we think that moving forward as the plans for education um, start to evolve and transition to forward thinking, we think that the OER recommendation that UNESCO and all 193 member states adopted at the end of last year will prove to be a powerful vehicle for advancing and supporting open education moving forward. So those are a few snippets uh, in terms of our plans. Uh, maybe one last one I'll mention. This one's uh, something that I'm really um, keen to see us move forward with and we're making some progress on it behind the scenes. Um, and that is um, more member to member interaction and engagement. Um, and we call it member to member because we're interested in our members getting the benefits of the reciprocal knowledge and expertise that each other have. So of course we're looking to have member engagement with us at Open Education Global, but more particularly, we're really excited about the possibilities that might emerge when our members have greater facility to connect with each other. So um, the spirit of doing things virtually during the pandemic, we'll be launching a series of um, means by which members can interact and, and connect with each other for things like collaborating on projects, professional development, sharing resources, and so on. So look forward to that. Uh, we're looking forward to the year. It's been a kind of up and down time, I'd say, for all of us, and I expect the same is true for you. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and we're looking forward to engaging you in the coming year.